In this video, I'm going to do a response to a comment uh, left on a video I did a couple years ago entitled, Bill Russell was great, but he was no Will Chamberlain. And the commenter, his name is James Bridgewater. And um, he asked for my thoughts on um, some things that he left on the left in his comment. And uh, I bet just yesterday told him that I would uh, do a video today. And uh, he replied saying he, looking forward to, he looked forward to the video. And uh, here it is. Um, so this is how I was going to do it. I'm going to read your comment because it's rather lengthy. And I'm going to respond, uh, you know, and kind of to things I see in your comment. Um, all right. Uh, excellent. <clears throat> I agree with most of what you say. If Wilt played on those Celtic teams, he would have had at least as many championships as Russell, probably more. That's, of course, with all accounts being equal as far as seasons played, supporting cast, etc. I agree with that. I think if you put Wilt Chamberlain on those Boston teams... Uh, matter of fact, I believe Red Arbuck tried to recruit Wilt Chamberlain first before he uh, chose uh, Bill Russell. Um, going on. If Russell played on the teams Chamberlain did, not only does he not probably win a championship, definitely not more than two, but he's probably considered an above average to very good center. Um, I think he still would have been considered a great all time great. I'm gonna give Wilt uh I'm gonna give excuse me Bill Russell that. But I, I often make the comparisons between him and Nate Thurman. Um I think if you put Nate Thurman on the Boston Celtics, put him in the team uh in nineteen sixty two, have him played in nineteen seventy uh eight and you put uh Bill Russell on the Golden State Wall at the time, the Philadelphia Warriors, then San Francisco Warriors. I think that Bill Russell would be seen as one of the great centers of his era, but just a notch below Nate Thurman and Will Chamberlain. Uh, I don't think that Nate Thurman would have won 11 championships just because of the fact that uh, the league had expanded uh, by the time of his uh, peak. I think, uh, you know, I think uh, when Russell played, it was like 8 to 14 teams, I think, something like that. Whereas when Nate played, it was something more like uh, 10 to, ooh, toward the end of his career, it might have been like close to 20 teams. So I don't know if he won 11 titles, but I definitely think that the Celtics would have won probably something in the neighborhood of six titles, at least, maybe more. Um so, yeah, I do agree with that, the notion that championships have inflated Bill Russell's uh, legacy and in his, in, in his perception amongst players, uh, amongst, excuse me, amongst uh, fans and, and, and historians and whatever as to where he ranks in the league. I do think if Bill Russell had never won a title, I do not think that he'd be considered a top 10 all-time player. I think he'd be considered somewhere around where Nate Thurman's considered a top 50 player, but not top 10. Because the first thing that people uh, always reference with Bill Russell are the titles. That's just my opinion. Um, all right, going further with this. Uh, he may have scored more, talking about Russell, because of the need for him to do so, but no way does he put up Wilt like stats. So, of course, I agree with that 100%. Uh, I think that uh, with the Philadelphia slash San Francisco Warriors, Bill Russell would probably score somewhere in the neighborhood of maybe at the most 23, 24 points per game, uh, maybe like 18, 19, 20 rebounds a game. Uh, I think his assists would be a little bit lower, maybe two to three assists per game. Uh, I don't think he ever shoots as high a percentage because he wasn't quite the same offensive player that Wilt was. Uh, I, I would even dare to say that his field goal percentage would probably be in the lower 40s as opposed to the 44% I believe that he shot for his career. Uh, sort of like Nate Thurman. Uh, I think they're similar in a lot of ways. Um, just that Nate was a little bit bigger. Uh but, okay, what happened when Wilt was surrounded by all-star talent? 
the Sixers and Lakers teams, which which uh, with which he won championships, are considered to be amongst the best ever, better than any of the eleven Celtic teams that won championships with Russell. Once again, another point I agree with. Um, I believe it was in 1981, the 35th anniversary of the NBA, a panel of experts uh, came to the conclusion through thorough analysis and study that they felt that the 1966-67 Philadelphia War, uh, Philadelphia 76ers, excuse me, with uh, Will Chamberlain, the team that went 68-13 during the regular season, was the greatest uh, team in NBA history. Uh, and, of course, one of the other great teams of the first 35 years of the NBA was the 71-72 Los Angeles Lakers that went 69-13 and during the regular season, which was the record for most wins in the season for 24 years until, of course, the, 70, the 96 Bulls, excuse me, that won uh, 72 games. And, of course, they still have the record for the longest win streak in NBA history with 33 games. So, Will Chamberlain was part of both teams. Uh, this is where you disagree with me. Um, however... I don't think that Jordan or Jabbar were better. Talked about better than Wilt. You said you liked Kareem's all-around game. He wasn't even close to Wilt when it came to rebounding. No, he wasn't. How about passing? Wilt was far superior on defense. Wilt was, def- Wilt was a superior defensive player. Um, the thing about Wilt and his passing. <sighs> this might rub you the wrong way, but you can make the argument that Wilt was being selfish when it came to leading and being passing. It didn't come naturally. It was like an accomplishment, a goal that he set up for himself to lead the NBA in assist. Because at that particular time, I believe they still counted assist leaders now on a per game basis, but total assists. Because uh, I don't think he would have led the NBA in assists if they were still doing it on a, if they started doing it on a per game basis. I think they were doing it on total assists. Uh, but still, I think it was a, a somewhat self centered goal for Wilt to do that. Uh, it still was an amazing accomplishment. He's still the only center to do that. But he set out for himself. Well, if I'm no longer going to lead the NBA in scoring as I did with the Warriors, then I'm going to, and if I'm doing this role, then I must lead the NBA in something else. If I'm uh, selfish in scoring, I'm going to show them I'm the greatest assist man. So I'm going to lead the NBA in assists. He came into the, in the, into the season with that mindset, and he accomplished, he accomplished it. But that's what he did. Now, Abdul-Jabbar was a more than able passer, uh, you know, but uh, on a per game basis, I think Will averaged four point four assists per game. Jabbar, I think it was like three point. Uh, was it three or was it? I think it was three point something. I can't remember. Uh, but you know, statistically, Will was a better passer. I- I'll seed you that. Uh. The Kareem ever lead NBA in assists? No. Uh, you know, I already talked about that. How many bad teams did Kareem play on? He always had the big O or Magic, two of the greatest players of all time. Now, wait a minute now. Now, we have to remember something now. When Kareem joined the – when he was drafted by the Milwaukee Bucks, he instantly made that team better. The season before – he was drafted. The Milwaukee Bucks were something like 27, what were they, like 27 and 55 or something like that. And the year he joined them, they more than doubled their win total from 27 to 56. This was before Oscar got there. He made teams better. Okay, just him being on the roster made that team better. When they got Oscar the very next year, that's when they went, I believe, uh, to 66 wins and became the greatest team in franchise history won the title. Conversely, um, when he was traded to the six, uh, to the Lakers, excuse me, in 1975, the NBA was at a peak when it comes to 
Now, while the NBA was at its lowest level when it came to fan participation, fan attendance, and popularity, and Jules Irvin helped to turn it around and really went to new heights with Larry and, and Magic and then even higher heights than with Michael. But during the 70s, while the NBA suffered when it came to popularity, when it came to parody, when it came to uh, competition, the NBA was at its peak. That's why there, was, there were virtually no dynasties in the 1970s. It was so like how the NFL and NBA are, where it's like every team was fucking competitive. Uh, so without Kareem, the Lakers would have sucked horribly. They would have been like probably the worst team in the NBA or one of the worst teams. The Sixers before Jewish were probably the worst team. Uh, but still, Kareem made teams better. Just him. He's a franchise caliber player. Uh, he kind of lucked up, in, you know, with the Lakers and uh, later on when they got Magic and then later on James Bird, a guy who doesn't get brought up a lot n- enough. But, you know, this has to be, you know, I don't know about that one. I kind of disagree with that. All right. As far as Jordan, you can make a case. Not only was he a great scorer, but also among the best defenders every year. I believe he won Defensive Player of the Year one year, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I mean, at, at his absolute prime, Michael Jordan, you can make the argument that he was the league's best offensive player and the league's best defensive player, particularly in the uh, late 80s, early 1990s. Uh, the only other guy that might have been a better defensive player, to me, in my opinion, uh, this is my opinion, would be Dennis Rodman, maybe Alvin Robertson, Robertson, but, uh, I, I, yeah, he, Michael was a just phenomenal player, man. Um, and, yes, he did win the uh, Defensive Player of the Year Award in 1987-88. Uh, get, go back to where I was, okay. Let's compare it to both averaged just over 30 points per game. Is there any doubt in your mind that Wilk could have scored more? Well, if he had chose to. Yeah. Uh, Wilk finished with a 30.06 points per game scoring average. Michael fractionally hit a 30.12 points per game. Uh, I think um, before Wilk joined the Lakers, his scoring average was something around... 34 points per game or 33 points per game or something like that. Uh, at his highest, at his highest, just before he joined the uh, Philadelphia 76ers, Wolf's career scoring average was 39.5 points per game. Uh, so Michael never came close to that. I think the highest Michael scoring average ever was was 32.8 points per game. Uh, so, yeah, if he had chose to play that way, Wilt would have blown out the competition. Wilt has always stated that if he had known there had been such an emphasis on scoring and scoring records and all that, that he would have tried to put a scoring mark way out of way out of reach. If he, that was his his goal, but it wasn't. Um, but let's just go on. The point is that Kareem uh, Kareem had two scoring titles. Wilt seven. Jordan 10. I mean, we could, would have, could have, should have all the time, but, I mean, that's just how that is. On a per-game basis, Jordan is the greatest scorer in NBA history. Though, I get your point. I understand what you're trying to say. Um, let's go further on to this one. When he joined the Sixers, Tom Will, he played a more complete game, taking far fewer shots and being more of a distributor. I think his stat line of his championship campaign was 24 points, 24 rebounds, and 8 assists. He was about 30 by now. Could he have averaged 30, 35 points per game more? Probably. Uh, I guess. Jordan never averaged 8 assists in a season. Yes, he did. During the 1988-89 campaign, when Jordan primarily played the point guard position, 
Uh, he averaged 32.5 points, 8 rebounds, and 8 assists per game. And not rounded up totals, but actually over, a little bit over 8 assists per game. That's when he had, I think, a stretch where he had 10 triple doubles during a span of 15 games and 7 consecutive triple doubles, which is the, the feat that Russell Westbrook just recently tied. It was during that season. Okay. Um, let's see if I go on from here. Uh, he could have, but he was he wouldn't have been averaging 35 every night. Well, he did average 32.5. Wilt still holds 71 NBA records, 62 of which are individual records. He was so dominant that they had to change rules so people could stop him. I'm sorry, I still think Wilt was the greatest of all time. When I have more time, I'd like to make a case for Larry Bird being the second best player in NBA history. I really appreciate your commentary. Unlike a lot of people in here, you know what you are talking about and back it up with sound reasoning. Please give me your feedback. But yeah, I, I enjoyed the information that you gave me. Uh, I you know I like I said I don't always want people to agree with me on everything, uh, but I like the fact that you gave information to back up your beliefs on certain things. I have no problem with anybody who thinks that Kareem's the greatest player of all time or Wilt's the greatest player of all time. And I think I said recently in a video that with some new information I've read about Wilt, I'm thinking about maybe pushing Wilt back up to second place. Me personally. Um, I mean, any person who, you know, averages, you know, I've seen new information from Harvey Pollock, Paul Pollock, excuse me, uh, the late Harvey Pollock, who, uh, said that he saw, uh, a game where Wilt blocked, what was it, 26 shots in a game against the Detroit Pistons. Uh, he says in his estimation, Wilt averaged 10 blocks per game in his career, uh, which is about what I was saying. Uh, that would have been that Will had blocked over 10,000 shots in his career. Uh, you know, he had a, you know, he had a stretch where he uh, followed uh, Chamberlain's statistics and, and blocks and recorded everything and during a 112-game stretch, he said Chamberlain averaged 8.8 .8 blocks per game. Uh, during the same stretch, Bill Russell averaged 8.1 blocks per game. Uh, during a two-year stretch with the Philadelphia 76ers, Wilt averaged like well over 10 blocks per game both seasons. Uh, I took those numbers, and I tried to make an estimate or a guesstimate of how many blocks Wilt had uh, both seasons combined, it came up to 1,700-something, which would have been about 45% of the total that Akeem Olajuwon had for his career, which is 3,830. Um, and some people say things, well, you know, it was easier to block shots than that era. Uh, you know, uh, the, the, the goaltending rules were more laxed, what have you. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of things you could say. But, uh, I mean, okay, but at the same time, there are things that are more lax now. They don't call traveling the NBA anymore. I mean, there are certain things that people can do with ball handling, you know, with, with ball, handling, ball handling now that are remarkable. But years ago, they have been called for traveling every time. So that's my opinion on this one. Um, you know, so I hope you like what I said. I hope that gave you, an, you know, Enough opinion. Uh, enough. Um, hope I give enough opinion to uh, tell you how I feel on certain particular issues. And uh, like I said, all these players are great. Uh, we might d disagree on where we rank each one and this one, but we all have them in uh, our top ten and top twenty. So that's all that matters.